Hi everyone, I'm borrowing some video inspiration from a friend today. This recipe comes from Alison Kay, who is the wonderful and very inspiring creator behind AncestralKitchen.com and the Ancestral Kitchen podcast, which she hosts with Andrea Huenehoff. I hope I pronounced that right, Andrea. My apologies if I didn't. Alison really loves spelt, and this recipe is one of her regular breads that she makes in her very productive Italian kitchen. I'm not yet sure how similar our spelt grains and flours are. I um, have a funny feeling they might be a bit different, but I really wanted to try this recipe out and I was just inspired to give it a go, so I thought I'd record it for you all. This recipe uses a scald where a portion of the flour is cooked to form a starchy gel, which is then cooled and mixed in with the rest of the dough. This scalding technique is known to extend the keeping quality of the bread. Um, so I thought I'd give it a try and see for myself. I haven't made many scalded doughs before. I'll put a link to Alison's original recipe below, so make sure you have a look at that. And let's get started with the recipe. So I start off by milling my grain into flour. Alison uses um, locally milled spelt flour in her recipe, but it is whole flour. It's not sifted as far as I understand, but I'm using um, Australian spelt grain from Northwestern Victoria and it is absolutely beautiful. So I'm milling up some of that. You need 600 grams of whole spelt flour in total for this recipe. Some of that's going to be used to make the levan or the starter and some of it will be used for the scald and the rest will be used for the final dough. So it's quite a lot of um, flour I'm milling up there. I just did that on the very finest setting on my mock mill 200. Comes out wonderfully. Now the first step I did was to make the starter or the levain. So it's 45 grams of the, the flour, the whole spelt flour. It's just the same flour used throughout this whole recipe and 32 grams of water. I'm following Alison's measurements or her ingredients um, exactly. And I'm added there, you can't see I added, but I did add 13 grams of sourdough starter to that mix as well. So mix the fresh flour, the water and the starter in together really well. You can see it's a fairly thick mixture. I just give it a knead around the little bowl in my spoon and cover that. I started about 1 p.m. so I'm getting this all ready to mix the dough in the evening. Uh, next I make the scald and for the scald you use 48 grams of the flour which is 8% of the total recipe um, and to that you add 192 grams of water. Um, again, I'll link to Alison's recipe in the description box below for all the measurements. So don't worry about writing them down. It's all there on her website. I put a bit too much water in, so I pulled it out. Um, now for the scald, Alison, I'm just following exactly what Alison does. She cooks her scald. I've seen some recipes where you just pour boiling water over the flour and that's sort of seen as sufficient for the scalding, but she actually cooks her scald, which I kind of like. It makes it into a proper porridge. So I just put that on my stove on medium to high heat initially, and then I turned it down because it was overcooking. And make sure you whisk out all the lumps. You want this to be really smooth before you start. And then as it cooks, whisk it as you need to, to get out the lumps as well. I was playing with my camera and it started bubbling away on me. So I, I knew that it would be probably a bit lumpy. So I grabbed my whisk, uh, turned the heat down and just kept whisking until it became a really nice, smooth, pasty consistency. Now I realized that through all this whisking and cooking of the scald, I've probably lost a bit of the water from my recipe just through evaporation. I didn't add any more or bother with weighing it to see how much it was or anything, but that's something I might bear in mind if I made this recipe again. I'll probably just add a tiny little bit more water through the main dough just to um, increase the hydration a little bit because I probably lost more than I was meant to with all my cooking and stirring that went on. Um, I'd say ideally you'd probably be pretty quick with this stage and get it covered. Um, cover it and set it aside to cool. 
Now, later in the day, the starter has fully activated. So it's like six hours later, five hours later, the starter is activated and the scald has cooled down. So I mix the final dough. I use 507 grams of flour for the main dough. In Alison's recipe, she does it all in one day. She uh, mixes the starter the night before and then makes the dough in the morning and then ferments it during the day and then bakes it. But because of my schedule, there's the salt going in, 11 grams. Uh, because of my schedule, I really needed to ferment this dough overnight. Um, so I baked it the next morning. And, and you can do that if you know, you know a few tricks in manipulating the temperatures to keep things cool overnight. So I'll show you what I did there. Here is the scald. It's just been sitting in the fridge for most of the afternoon once it cooled off. Um, you can hear all the cicadas in the background. It's springtime here in Brisbane at the moment. So we've got cicadas going crazy. Uh, so you get the scald and pretty much just putting everything together for the final dough now. I added half a tablespoon of honey to my uh, my scald and my water. I'm pretty much just putting all of the liquidy type of ingredients together there's the starter going in you want to add all of that the nice spelt fresh spelt starter and Alison I don't think she mixes all this together first but I did because I knew that that scald would be quite chunky and lumpy and hard to mix through so I thought I would um, put the water the starter and the scald all together make sure it's nice and smooth and then just add that total lot into my flour which has the salt mixed into it just to save having any lumps in the dough or anything that's unmixed so all of that goes in and then I just mix it up really just kind of slowly pull the flour into the wet mixture this is a firmer spelt dough than I'm used to making uh, this recipe is about 70% hydration all up. Usually I make my spelt doughs about 80, 85%. Uh, but I wanted to be true to the recipe and um, just see how it would turn out. So uh, it is a little bit drier. And usually when my doughs are a bit drier, I have to get my hand in there and push it around just to uh, get the moisture mixed through all the dry flour. A lot of my breads, if you've seen my other videos, I make really sloppy doughs, which you can get away with with um, whole grain flours. A lot often they're very absorbent, so they can take a lot of water. Um, but this one wasn't as moist. You can see though when I've finished mixing that it's moist enough. It's actually a beautiful dough, and it made a lovely bread. So there's no issues with that level of moisture at all. And certainly some flours, spelt flours around the world cannot take the high hydration that I often use in my recipes. So I just mix that dough together. I didn't need it really to develop anything in there. I just wanted to uh, mix it to make sure it was well incorporated. And then I put it into my cooler with an ice brick overnight. Um, here it is the next morning. Um, the cooler just stops it from over fermenting. You can see it's well risen there, but the dough is still quite cool. Uh, it keeps it about 18 degrees in the cooler and I use that through summer. It's a great way to ferment your bread overnight in summertime without it over fermenting and, and turning into soup. So that's a really good trick. Uh, you can see the bread is very well risen so I wouldn't want to left it any too, too much longer. And if I was going to leave it a lot longer I would have put it in the fridge or added an, another ice brick to keep it nice and cool. But that overnight fermentation trick works excellently in summertime. I love it. So I'm just shaping my dough now. It's a very straightforward recipe. It's just a mix, ferment, shape and bake affair. Um, my shaping's not the best and I must admit I struggle a little bit with shaping firm doughs and I probably tend to degas de them too much. Um, but I knew this was going to be a nice spread regardless and it did smell the dough did smell really really good so I got some good flavor I think through the scald and the fermentation um, so I'm just kind of doing a basic shaping I let it rest for five minutes while I greased my pan and then just did another final little roll up for the loaf pan you could easily make this dough in a free form 
style, you know, using a banneton or a basket, it would be beautiful. Sorry about the crow in the background, <laughs> by the way. I've got so much wildlife going on here. Um, so yeah, I just roll that up and put it in the in the pan for the final proof. I found this beautiful Pyrex, vintage Pyrex pan in my local op shop. I couldn't resist. I'm a bit of a minimalist, really. I don't have a lot of stuff um, in my life, but kitchen stuff and baking pans, that's my one thing that I love to collect if I find something really nice. So I've just put it in this uh, plastic container for the final proof to stop it from drying out. Um, and I had to get this baked before I went out later that morning and I was a little bit worried it was going to proof really really slowly because the dough was still a bit cool um, and I was a bit pushed for time and needed to get it baked so this is my trick for speeding up the final proof I just put uh, my dough into this big old roaster and then fill two coffee mugs with boiling water and that creates some steam around the loaf and some heat from the, the steam and the hot water in the cups. And it just speeds up the final proof. So I put that in there. I think the final proof for this dough was about two and a half hours or so. And I managed to get it done uh, before I went out to see my friend. So it was good. You can see there um, it's pretty looking pretty good. And at that stage, uh, that's when I got the oven preheated. Gosh, the birds. <laughs> There's so many birds going on. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time I hear them. Um, so here we are for the baking. The bread, you can see it's fairly well risen. Um, I'm just baking it inside my roasting dish as I usually do. It just helps to keep the loaf really nicely steamed. Um, I tend to get a pretty good oven spring when I do that. I spray a little bit of water on as well. Allison uses a brush and she brushes water on the top of her dough but I have my sprayer so I just use that. Now I baked mine a little bit different to Alison. This is the only way that I deviated from the recipe. I baked mine for a full 60 minutes at my usual 210 Celsius. Alison does a bit more of a staged bake with lower temps uh, and to be honest I probably should have followed what she suggested <laughs> because I over baked it. You can see well you'll see in a second it's a bit burnt. A little bit disappointing. I was not happy about that. Um, but normally my loaves don't get burnt uh, when they're baked like that. But I forgot that when you scald flour, it releases or it translates some of the complex carbohydrates into simple sugars. You know, so you're cooking the dough and the sugars in the dough, obviously they, they make the dough bread taste really nice, but they also uh, can increase the risk of it burning. But overall, this bread turned out beautiful. It's got a lovely flavor. It was a little bit more sour than my usual spelt breads. And I think that usually for me happens when I speed up the final proof with the hot water trick in the, in the roaster. Um, so if you're using a proofing box or you're making your final proof a bit warm, just watch out for that. That can increase the sourness of your bread, which you may or may not like. It's a good trick if you're trying to get your bread to be more sour. Um, generally, I avoid that. But uh, it, this bread does have a tighter crumb than I normally get with my whole spelt doughs. But Alison's right. It does have a nice moist texture to it. And it did keep very well. I This loaf is completely eaten by now. Um, yeah, I think it did keep a little bit softer for longer than my other breads. It was generally really good. I was really happy with it. I'd really like to make this bread again with a bit more moisture. I think I'd probably get a slightly more open bread, something that looks a little bit more like Alison's. <laughs> But this was really fun. Thanks very much, Alison, for the inspiration. I hope you like the video when you get to see it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, yeah, thanks again for all of your support. As always, I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon for another video. Bye.